Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Hippatios of Crete. And here you can see we're taking a look at the Eastern Roman Empire as it stands now. Obviously, holding the lands in Greece and Anatolia, including the island of Crete. And then our reasonably newly conquested lands in Sicily, which were taken by our father Alexandros. And then most recently, you can see down there at the far left side, we now have captured Tunis. Although it is no longer named Tunis, we have in fact renamed it to Carthage. I think that that is quite fitting indeed. We still have a lot to do in order to reclaim the holy sites that we are looking to capture. We have now the site of Carthage here, which is excellent, but we still need to capture three, two more if we want to reform our faith. And we do want to reform our faith, so we're going to need to take either Vaticano, that's going to be difficult, Servia, Athens, or Alexandria. Servia and Athens, definitely possible. Alexandria, certainly possible as well. Fighting Egypt is something that we may look to do in the future. But definitely Athens is something that we are looking up in at in the more near future here. And that is because Duke Antonios of House Scleros, which has been an enemy of us for quite some time since our father's era. Well, they did go to war with our brother trying to take Calabria. So if Scleros can attack our brother, then I think it's only fair. And I don't know if the emperor can do much to stop us from attacking Scleros himself. So once our oracle here, Theophylactos, is able to convert Hania, he is very close, just nine months left, and then the entire island will be Hellenic, we'll probably put him on to fabricating a claim on Athens for us, which I think will be very helpful. It's a good county anyways, but mostly we just want to get that holy site. That'll put us in possession of two holy sites. Well, once we get the three that we need, we would like to reform the faith. And that is going to require quite a lot of piety here. You can see that it's even just a base reformation here is going to be 4250. That's about 10 times as much as we got right now. And that's not even including if we want to change things like, say, adding Christian syncretism or something like that. So we're going to need a lot more piety. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that in our character's lifetime. Uh, Hippatios may be able to get that much uh, piety. We'll see. If we want to do that, what we're probably going to need to do is an early pilgrimage. Uh, sometime in the next probably five years, we're going to need to go on a pilgrimage to get that those good pilgrim traits and start building up our piety like pretty quickly. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off because we are not a theological minded character. It would be much easier if we could say go down this tree and which one is it? I believe theologian prophet maybe. Yeah, yeah. Faith creation and reformation cost minus 50 percent. If we could get that, that would be a big boon. There's nothing to say that we couldn't potentially try to go down this tree, but uh, I mean, we are more of a warlike character, so I don't know if it's going to happen, but we'll see. At the very least, we can try to get those holy sites for our dynasty and go from there. So what are we going to do in the meantime? Well, the main thing is we don't have a lot of money and we're going to need to look into how we can get some more money. And that's by raiding. Our best raid targets here, now that we have some land that we can raid from here in Carthage, is going to be the Algerian rulers over here. We've got Emir Paman, uh, the Rustamids, the Wahhabids. These are going to be our best targets for some raids because the, they're really the only ones weak enough around here for us to attack. Mazab is obviously too powerful. These guys are, eh, we might be able to take them. Uh, Aglabids we have the truce with. Tripoli is pretty strong, so we might be able to take these guys, but that's kind of far away. So I'm going to go into the Algerian coast here and deal with that and kind of loot, bring back the loot for us, bring it back to Carthage, 
ship it over to Crete, and then we'll use that to fund many different things, including, yes, I'm building some buildings, but the reason why I don't want to necessarily spend a lot of money building up here in Crete is that it's highly possible that we are going to move our capital at some point, possibly to Alexandria, which I think would make a lot of sense if we can build like a Hellenic kingdom here in Egypt. That would be pretty cool. Maybe do a um, cultural melding with the Egyptian people. So a Greek Egyptian kind of mixture here. That would be kind of historical and, and pretty fitting, I think. So we'll see how that plays out, but Either way, we are going to need that money. There's a little bit of stuff I want to do, take care of just before that, though. Uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, the curse that is affecting the males in our family is certainly still going. I noticed this in between episodes. Prince Eulanios here, our, our brother's son and heir, uh, seemed to have suffered from an unfortunate fate. Indeed, he has died after a botched treatment. You can see that... Uh, the treatment really didn't go too well for him. That is kind of horrific. Uh, and and he ended up dying, this poor one-year-old child. That is very sad. Uh, our brother does have a daughter, Princess Nicarete, named after our mother. And she's pretty good. She's quick and comely. So uh, potentially a good ruler if he doesn't have any more children. I wouldn't be surprised if he does, though. So there is that. And some of you have given some good suggestions for the name of our daughter. And the one that I like the most, there were a lot of really good ones. I liked Hestia or something along those lines. Name her after some of the Greek gods. But what I really liked the most was somebody pointed out that it is tradition uh, to name your eldest child. I, I imagine it's probably eldest son after your father. But because we only have one child right now, a daughter... I think that naming her Alexandra would be a excellent name and an excellent way to honor her father. Not only that, but she is also bossy. So she might end up kind of becoming like a warrior queen, maybe even. That could be cool. Like give her the martial focus. Yeah, you know, I don't see why she might not. Uh, we'll see which one it, the game ends up giving her. But yeah, I'm curious to see what... Uh, what she'll turn out as, because if we don't have any sons, she may end up being our heir. Our wife is still young. We've still got plenty of time, and we could get concubines, and we probably will at some point, but I'm not going to rush that. I'm not really too worried about our dynasty just yet. Uh, our sister here, who has turned to the drink, unfortunately, uh, does need a marriage. We let her get out of the first one, but... We do need to give her another one. And I was taking a look and I found a pretty good prospect here. Uh, Alahos Linutifikafi of House Arpad. Yeah, definitely completely butchered that. He is probably the best prospect. Hungary is a relatively strong potential ally for us. And I think that, well, actually, yeah, there we go. That's the proper Hungary here. Uh, they would actually be a pretty strong ally for us because it's really the only strong ally in this region that we can get. Everybody else is either Christian or Muslim or whatever. These Hungary is probably our best bet. So I think I am going to arrange for that marriage. There we go. And I think that should secure us. That guy is the... Uh, future heir to Hungary, so that alliance should con continue for uh, quite a while, and I think that'll be highly advantageous to us. Ah, there was one last thing. There was one last thing. We will get to raiding right away, but I think you will all appreciate this. I was taking a look. You'll remember in our last episode that our brother was slain in battle. Yes, we went to do battle with the forces of the Duke of uh, of Athens there, and our brother was slain in one of those battles. I believe it was in Salerno. Who was he slain by? He was slain by Constantinos. Just so happens, Constantinos is one of the people in our prison. Well, we need to find a fitting punishment for this man. What would a fitting 
punishment be? Well, we're obviously not going to negotiate his release, but here we go. Do we blind him or do we castrate him? I feel like for the death of our brother, executing him would be too easy, too easy of a punishment. No, we are going to blind the man. That's going to give us stress, but you know, we'll we'll take the stress. Uh, I think that this is an absolutely fitting punishment for the man who slew our brother. So there we go. Let us get our revenge. The, dra the jailer drags a panicked Constantinos into the room. Please, I will do anything, anything you want. His protests are cut short as the jailer gags him and ties him down on the table. This might seem barbaric, I say, as the physician prepares his tools. But this is for the stability of the realm. Trust me, I take no pleasure in your suffering. No, I don't think we take pleasure in this, but I think that there has to be a punishment for what he did to our brother. Yeah, I mean, it's really the only thing that we that we can really do in this case. Executing him, sure, but that'd be, like I said, too easy of a punishment on the man. So now that we've taken care of all that, it is time to go and collect our money. Indeed, it is our money, or it's going to be very soon here. So let us raise all of our troops up as raiders. We're probably going to send Tomislav on the raid. I think that's probably fine. We don't need to go and do the raiding ourselves. We have more important matters to attend to. Huh. Today was a good day to admire the wolf fangs, but to my horror, I discovered it's gone missing. After a brief investigation, a servant tells me Despot Bosporius is rumored to have said that the wolf fangs would look better in his possession. Our dastardly brother stole the wolf fangs from us, and he stole the prize ring too. This is, oh, this is like, this is a really good item. Our brother stole the prize ring from us. You... Ugh, you disgusting thief. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. Our brother has stolen from us. He didn't really take care of his realm when it was attacked by the Duke of Athens. We had to go and save him. But we are still, you know, we still consider him a friend. We still like him a lot, and the way I see it is this. Sometimes, with a brother, especially a wayward younger brother, you know, despite everything, despite everything that's happened, you know, I think it's more pity that we have on him for, like, what he's done. You know, he's just... He, he's just gone astray, in, in a sense, and I think, although he has kind of done a lot of things to offend us, I think that the affection that we have for him hasn't wavered. I think it's just more that we we want better for him. Uh, will this recent event affect the way that we pursue our relations with our brother and his kingdom? That's a good question. I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments, what an appropriate reaction for this would be. Um, I think... I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I don't think that we're, it's going to lead us to conquering Sicily and taking the title from him. Obviously, if we even if we did that, we would leave him with some of the titles. I don't know if that would push us that far yet. But yeah, let me know if you can think of any reasonable uh, recompense for what he has done there. We shall see. In any case, we're going to go on and do some raiding. I imagine our brother probably thinks that our father should have bequeathed some of these items to him, considering we in essentially inherited all of the items. So that's probably why he went in and stole the ring for us. He came in visit, stole the ring, took his ship back to Salerno. Well, you know, that's what happens. Brothers, I mean, you never really know. Anyways, here goes our rating, so we're probably going to speed up time a little bit here and just go and fill up on our raid money here and get as much as we can and then go back 
and probably do it again one more time. I think that we should be able to get enough. Uh, I don't want to take that attrition there. That's one thing that we're definitely going to want to avoid is taking attrition. We just don't have enough troops. At dinner today, I was too eager and to eat and burnt my tongue when I tried to get started on the soup. Everyone in the room looked at me either in alarm or shaking their head at my folly. Embarrassing. I couldn't look them in the eye. Happens to the best of us. We laugh it off. We are humble. I think humble uh, is the best kind of uh, response to something like that. Greetings, my modest vassal. I hoped it would not come to this, but I'm left with no other option. I must rescind your appointment as Marshal of the Byzantine Empire, effective immediately. Signed, Basileus Leon. How dare he? We have been ousted from the council by Duke Ignatios, who is terrible at his job. But I also see that Antonio Scleros is no longer on the council either. And that is because he is dead. Disappeared without a trace. Hmm. Seems like somebody might have done to Scleros what we wish that we would have done. His son is in charge now. Oh, but his son could end up being a good character. He is brave here, so... Yeah, all right. That's interesting. <laughs> interesting development. I don't think that changes our plan, but it does present some interesting opportunities. Uh, we are going to take living off the land here. That's going to speed up our raids, which is good because we're literally doing some raids right now. Okay. Hey there, Wanderers. This is the Stray King himself. If you've been enjoying the series so far and want to catch all the next videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you too want to have your own character take part in the story, check out the membership options through the join button below the video. Basileos Leon, the lover of elegance, has died. Died suddenly of a minor illness while on the march. Well now. <laughs> the Emperor has died at 38 years of age. He did not rule for long. He was only in charge of the Empire for what? Let's take a look at the title history here. 866... Uh, he inherited in 898, it's 905, so only seven years he was on the throne. And now his son, Basileus, Basileus II, takes charge, and he is a pretty good character, actually. Humble, just, and gregarious, so that's actually some pretty good traits. He could make a very, very strong emperor, actually. But he is actually Catholic. How is he Catholic? Is his mother Catholic? She is not, but she is Franconian. So the current emperor is actually Catholic. That is a very curious development indeed. I wonder, yeah, I think that could bring some potential instability to his role. Uh, other than that, he would probably make an amazing ruler. He probably still will. But he is Catholic, so I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some factions, like a Clayman faction maybe popping up or something along those lines to try to get a Orthodox ruler put in charge. Very curious development indeed. So some interesting things going on there. Uh, we're going to need to get our money so that we can deal with those those events as we can oh a ransom yeah all right we will we will ransom your daughter back i suppose get get as much money as we can here we're gonna need to deal with this stress is there anything that like our we're gonna have a heart attack here if we don't deal with this soon there's nothing we can do right now we could go on a hunt Ah, we can afford it. We can afford it. Feast or a hunt? Stress loss? Both of them will give us stress loss. The feast is more expensive, so you know what? We're going to do a hunt. We're not employing a master of the hunt. Let's, uh, let's pick ourselves out a master of the hunt here. 
court positions, master of the hunt. Who's gonna do a good job of that? Uh, Komitas. There you go. All right, you can be our hunt master here. That's gonna reduce our money, but we're getting all of our money from raiding anyways. So uh, let's enact this hunt. Let us plan it. It's going to be a hmm. Let's see. Though costly, hawking and falconry provided joy. Well, we don't want to spend as much money, so we're gonna do we're gonna do this one. We're just gonna do a regular hunt, and let's see. I'm pretty sure there was some. I think that there was some foxes or something in one of these, but uh, we're just gonna head over to. Iraklio, I think that should be all right. There's no danger here. Uh, spending cost 151. You can't quite afford that, so. Yeah, all right, so let's do a smaller hunt. We'll get less prestige, but uh, we'll, we'll actually be able to afford it here. Search parties, local gamekeepers, and yeah, we're just gonna do the cheapest hunt we can do. This is just... This is just a very, a very simple hunt, and we're gonna look for, yeah, the stress relieving opportunities. That's really entirely what this is about. We're just trying to prevent our death by heart attack here by taking some time and going on a little hunt. As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, my servants can get started on the preparations. The games keepers check the highlands each day for signs of the quarry while establishing a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I've checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now, soon. There we go. So yeah, let's we'll get the hunt. Hopefully we'll get some stress loss there and and not die. That's that's the main idea. Here. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so I was right. And it looks like some of the lords are already looking to put Prince Akakios on the throne here. That would be yeah, indeed the second eldest son who was born in the purple, as they as they say, and he is going. I mean, we'll see if this faction builds up some. Oh, he's he's putting himself in. Yeah, because we need a good uh, Orthodox ruler here, is what they're thinking. All right, we'll let them Orthodox and Catholics fight in between themselves. We'll pounce when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, but yeah, that is very curious indeed. Civil War may come to the Empire quite soon. Knapsack. An adventurer passed by recently and visited my court to regale us with tales of lands beyond. This adventurer, before leaving, gifted me with a leather knapsack, saying it might be of use to me to help me carry things while on trips. It's not the most beautiful thing ever, but the craftsman who made it clearly designed it to have a rustic, simplistic charm, while being able to handle the burden of carrying many things with ease. It helps me a lot. Uh, you know what? I think we would keep it because we are humble and diligent. So what is this going to even do? Intrigue plus one. Oh, that's nice. There we go. And we need something to fill up a slot considering our brother stole the prize ring. Although we have the lock of hair. Let's, that's actually better. So there we go. Uh, looks like our raiders, they're probably pretty close to having enough money. We'll probably finish raiding here and then head back. And that should give us a nice little boost to our money, especially considering that this hunt is costing us quite a bit. Dion Dionysos assembles the party as the sun rises over the camp in the hills near Heraklion. After piercing, piecing together information from a few local gameskeepers, there's some talk of tracks and fumes nearby. While there's sadly no sign of a buck in the area, there's evidently plenty of foxes. Let's get out there and find them. I want to hunt something with Vim. Yeah, no, let's just go for the, the foxes. We don't really care too much about the prestige. It would be nice, but we need to reduce the stress. My party and I stalk through a copse, eyes peeled for any sign of a fox. From the canopy above, a soft twittering spills forth, growing ever louder as we advance. It is a nesting, nestling screeching for its mother. An agile huntsman brings down a fluffy as an unfledged raptor chick from the oak. What luck? Only young birds caught in the wild can be properly trained to hunt. Take it back to my muse or put it back. 
Uh, will happen, we gain some prestige or bring it back to the muse. We gain a hunting raptor for five years. Presti Ooh, look at that. Plus one prestige per month. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna take that and get that little bit of hunting experience as well. So, poachers here in the despot's flatland, they huddle together as I ride up with my guards, making a poor job of hiding the dead stag behind them. We did not do this. Please have mercy, glorious despot. Their blades and bows belie their words. They will hang and their villages will pay. Punish poachers? Hmm, yeah, okay. The animal is mine along with a fine for their lives. Okay, get out of the, get out of my highland. They will hang and their villages will pay. Hmm. Diligent, humble, gregarious. The animal is long. You know what? I think that we are going to try this option. Popular outrage. That's unfortunate. The people didn't like how we dealt with those poachers. My vassal, Mayor Alejandro, is the first to spot its flowing tail. The devious dog is hard to distinguish, but there's no doubt it's there. Observing us through the tall grass... It locks eyes with me and, almost as though it senses my intent, suddenly takes off in a flash of orange fur. After it, we ride! We will attempt to ambush the fox with our bow. After it, we ride. This method is more perilous. You know what? Let's... Yeah, we're brave. Well, we're not... Actually, we don't have the brave trait, but, you know, we were raised by a brave man. Let's do this. My world narrows to the nature surrounding us as we follow the dogs across rough ground on the scent of the fleeing fox. Bearing down the trail, all I hear is the thunder of hooves, dog barking, men shouting. Excitement flows through me as we gain on our quarry. So close, I almost have you. Can we get the... Can we get it? After hours of riding, we are finally cornering the wily beast. Our chase has not been in vain. The exhausted, panicked animal has to turn to bay, struggling to stand and barking in panic. The terrified fox is realizing it is unable to escape as the hounds and huntsmen uh, array around it. I will shoot it. Uh, I will finish it off or unleash the hounds. Let's see. We gain happy hounds for a year. <laughs> oh, that's stress loss. We need, we do need it, but we, how much can we afford to take here? I will shoot it. Yeah, I think that we are probably going to... I, th I think we're going to finish it off ourselves. I heft my spear and cautiously move towards the exhausted animal. I choose my moment carefully, plunging my blade deep into its heart. Take that. There we go. We gain the prestige. Heeding the call of the wild is an adventure, and this outing delivered the good and the bad in abundance. Though the quarry may have been small, the party is still elated with the satisfaction of a good hunt. Mayor Alejandro directs the breaking up, clumsily skinning the carcass before letting the game masters take over. We place the eager dog's share of the spoils in the stretched hide before departing the camp and coming up. Cursed fox hide. Masterwork small, oh, oh, small wall ornament. Prestige gain, hostile scheme, success chance, and court grandeur bonus. Okay. I don't know why it's cursed, but all right. It's lush pelt will be an excellent conversation beat. Oh, there we go. We can gain, we can lose some stress. My brother, uh, Despot Bosporus, will appreciate the trophy. Ah, uh, do we give it to our brother? He did steal from us. I don't think we would. All right, look at there. Okay, we lost some stress, finally. That is, that is a little bit of a weight off my shoulders. I'd like to gain, go down another level, but We'll see if we get an opportunity to do that. Looks like the raiding is done here. So let's send our raiders back with the money. And they've collected 69. That's going to be a nice little bonus. That's probably going to pay for most of the hunt. And we can do another ransom here. So we won't have to worry too much about money for, for right now. What are we going to do with little Alexandra? How are we going to raise her? Okay, it wants to give her a stewardship education. I'm actually okay with this. Even if we do end up playing this character, it would be nice to play a character who can make some money and rule and rule the realm well. So let's find somebody to educate her. Although I wouldn't mind educating her ourselves, but our sister Ariadne. 
Yeah, okay, and she is our court tutor. There we go. You can learn from our sister who's... Ah, she's... Ah, hopefully she doesn't give a, you the craven trait, but patient and just, those are really good traits. So we'll see. Our wife still hasn't given us another child. That's really unfortunate. 26, still got time, but yeah, I don't know why. It just must not be... Must not really be the the like a very good childbearing wife we, we may need to seek out a concubine i wonder if we have any basileus is being attacked by duke Calist. oh is the civil war beginning oh and that's a big civil war here oh boy all right let's take a look at what's going on over here all right so you are going up against you have no chance. Yeah, Basileos II, you are not going to, you're not going to make it long. This, this war is definitely over. And yet, Athens remains loyal to you. Oh, we did finish. I didn't even notice the event. I totally got distracted there, but looks like, yeah, look at this, Hellenic. Excellent. The island of Crete is now completely Hellenic. So that means that we can put you onto fabricating that claim here on Athens. Luckily, we will hopefully have enough money to pay for that claim if we do get it. We'll need to continue with the raids and in building up as much money as we can so that we can pay for that. But yeah, civil war in the empire. It's not going to be much of one. You're, this guy, this young man, he doesn't stand any chance against such a formidable force arrayed against him here. Massive amount of lords here, 16 of them. We're keeping out of this, but yeah, basically all the orthodox lords are going up against them. And for some reason, it is young Callistos here who is the one who is leading the charge here. Very interesting events indeed. We're going to see how that all plays out in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching.